Welcome back. Welcome back to An Athlete's Journey. I'm your host, Travis Reed. Today, I got a special guest, somebody I've been knowing for like 20 years now. It's been a minute. Like, you know what I'm saying? I realize I've been knowing this since like 98. <laughs> We've been in a different decade, different. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's 2023. I've been knowing this since 2098. <laughs> so she's just a really, really special person. Um, you know, like she is a pioneer, y'all. Like seriously, you know what I'm saying? What she's done is very few people have done it. And I respect her so much. She's like a good luck charm. You know what I'm saying? Like she, she, she went immediately, she goes to the Las Vegas team in the WNBA and they immediately win a championship her first year there. Like that's how she's just like the golden ticket. I need to take it with her the next time I buy a lottery tickets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, but please introduce yourself to the people. Hi, that's a that's a warm welcome. Uh, my name is Natalie Nakase. Uh, yes. I've known Travis since 1998. That's yeah. right. 19 goes in front of that. Yeah, um, yeah. So we 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 rocked. We've been rocking with each other for a long time. We both, uh, you know, we were very close to somebody. You know what I'm saying? uh that obviously is no longer with us but we don't have to get into that necessarily but um but definitely she's just a cool person I, I had just ran into her recently at a clipper game and like you know like you see somebody and you think you know him but you don't want to be a weirdo and come up to him like hey oh okay but like nah I was like hey you know me you know what I'm saying so um definitely was happy to see her and reconnect with her and uh like I said this summer I am going to a Vegas, uh, Vegas game, Vegas Aces game, just because of her, on the strength of her, and that's it. Nobody else. Right. All right. But what we're going to get into, we're going to talk about her journey and then how she transitioned to what she's doing now and just her success story. You know what I'm saying? She's, period. She's a success story that women athletes need to hear. You know what I'm saying? And she's been through it. And so, like, I'm just pumping her up right now. So. <laughs> yeah that's too much you need to break down a little bit i can't help it i'm, I'm like i said i'm i'm really really happy and really really powerful but anyway let's start how did your basketball journey start i'm such a loaded question when you <laughs> but okay long story short i mean my dad was just obsessed with basketball okay. so when you have someone you know your father father mm -hmm. figure he's completely mm -hmm. in love with the game um then he has three girls right? Wanted mm. a boy. I was the third. <laughs> I was the youngest of the third of three children. I was supposed to be a boy. My name was supposed to be Nathan. I was supposed to be the athlete. Um, but anyway, okay. uh, uh, yeah, I came out. My name's Natalie. Um, but by then he trained, you know, he trained all three girls as athletes and he knew like his passion for some reason, the way he taught it and the way he played to himself. Like I just gravitated towards him and that's how mm. we connected. We became close and you know, fell in love with basketball when I was really young, but had no idea, um, trained my ass off. And I mean, now I'm here, you know, so. Started from the bottom, now we're here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> now, um, so did you, did you interested in any other sports besides basketball growing up? He wouldn't let me, my dad wouldn't let me. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, hey, he's Japanese, you know, American, he's strict. He's, he, he knows what he wants. He's uh, focused, so. I mean, yeah, I wanted to play volleyball in high school, but he said, Nat, he goes, if you want to play basketball in college, or if you want to be great at basketball in high school, he goes, you can't do both, sport, both sports. He's like, it's mm, impossible. He's like, okay. so give up volleyball, focus on basketball. Let's see where it takes you. So he All made right. a lot of my decisions for me. <laughs> hey, I respect it. Pops, we know what's best, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how was the AAU circuit for you? You know, how did you grow up in the AAU circuit? It wasn't like it is now. Like it was... It was, it wasn't club, I guess, like how it is now. It's, it was AU. So there was only one team. So my team was um, made up of the top like 10 girls in Orange County. Okay. So that's okay. how it was. It wasn't like your high school team has a club team and, you know, yada, yada, yada. Like, so we did the whole national thing. Like we mm. won our region. We played, you know, nationally in Tennessee and Florida and all that stuff like that. So mm. completely different. Um, you're the top of your game if you're on you know, our AAU team. And we dominated, like, we just, oh, wow. we just dominated. And oh. what my dad, my dad actually was smart about was he made me play a year when I was younger, he made me play a year up. 
And so I wasn't the best. That was one of his keys to training is always making me like one of the worst or like the youngest players on the team. Mm -hmm. So I would have to really fight to, you know, play minutes or to start. And so, um, yeah, that was one of his, his training techniques. So. That makes sense. Hey, my dad did the same to me. Uh, he always made me play two to three years up. So when I was eight, I was playing against 11 year olds. Yeah. So, cause he would never let, want me to dominate, right. you know, uh, my age group. Cause I was, I was one of those kids that like, you know, his boom boom's too big. Yeah, that kid ain't eight years old. He ain't nine years old. He, he surprised how many times my mom was like, I birthed him. I know how old he is. <laughs> so he was like, forget all this. I'm going to just play you up. So you blend in with everybody else. And as far as the AU goes, yeah, we uh, I played with ARC at the time. Okay. And, you know, like back then, you know, it was ARC, K-Swiss, Slammer Jam, uh, PTI, it was really like four or five teams that had all the players. Um, it was me and Jason and Jaron Collins. We played together. Uh, like I said, we went to the Nationals. Yeah. Uh, we won the California region. We went to the Nationals in San Antonio, Texas, and Yakima, Washington, you know? <laughs> and so, yeah, we played against a lot, a lot of, like a lot of guys in the NBA, Shane Battier, El Brand, or Natesh, Lamar Odom. Yeah. Like all these dudes played in the Nationals. So like I saw all these dudes kind of grow up you know, like that too. Yeah. So, so obviously what, what, college, what high school do you go to in Orange County? The Marina high school in Huntington beach. Okay. Okay. So you're one of the best players obviously on the team or yeah. really in the country. Yeah. It ended up, you know, but again, it had to do with my dad's training. Like I was, you know, I didn't have a normal childhood. I didn't like go on a lot of vacations. I played, I trained seven days a week. I had two trainers by the time I was 11 you like, had two trainers on the time of 11? Yeah, I had a oh, basketball wow. trainer and I had like a strength and conditioning and agility trainer. So, like, no wonder. Okay. <laughs> See, y'all, y'all don't know. Like, she on the court, she was like a little gnat <laughs> on the court. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. <laughs> See, I was small. So, I needed like to train as hard as I could and learn the game, obviously, because I was 5'1 and 3 fourths. You know, <laughs> I'm not calling myself five two. I'm not giving giving that extra quarter, but I was small <laughs> since eighth grade. I've been the same size. So my dad was like, "Look, you got to train, but at the same time, like you got to learn and watch the game." So he mm. made me watch a lot of games. I remember even going. He took me to the game at Ocean View. He's like, "I want you to watch this guard." And I'm like, "What's his name?" He's like, "Baron Davis." And I'm like, "Who?" And he's like, <laughs> "Trust me." But that was my dad, right? Like he he was like, "Yo, you got to watch some of the top guards." And when I saw Baron, I'm like this kid is not in high school. I was like, this kid is not in high school. And I, my mouth was just like in awe. And I wanted, you know, to, I couldn't do any, half the things he did, but he played like Magic Johnson, you know, real flashy, but like he just controlled the game. And that's what I liked. And um, yeah, like that was another technique my dad did was like, you have to learn the game from the best players in the, mm -hmm. the area, so. No, definitely. Baron was, yeah. Baron was like on another level. Like, you know, when he, he the funny thing is like, I've been on Baron since he was like 10. He was a midget. He was like you. Yeah. He was short. Yeah. He was like five nine as a ninth, ninth grader. Yeah. But I met him when he was a seventh grade. He was this little little dude, but mm -hmm. he could score. Yeah. And then from ninth grade to like tenth grade, he grew from like five nine to like six foot, and then like tenth yeah. or eleventh, he grew from six to six feet to like six three. Right. And I was like, he kept everything together, and you know, obviously he still was built, and then obviously he became what he became. You know. Right. Um. So you're one of the top players in the state of California, or really top players in the country. Uh, what was your most memorable moment in high school? Mm, dang. Probably CIF, winning CIF. Um, mm, I think you're okay. exaggerating that I wasn't one of the best players in the country, though. That's a little... You are one of the best players in the country if you get recruited by UCLA. I, so there, there's something that is not true. I wasn't. I walked on to UCLA. Well, I mean, you, you, are, you were you preferred walk on like it's a no, difference i was not highly recruited out of high school i was five one i'm my size was not attracted attractive still like, hey. but you, you play you play i know i eventually played so okay clearly you didn't know this but the only really school that uh wanted me was uci and the guy called me the coach called me he's like hey okay. he's like you come here it'll be a guaranteed start position and i was just like so i was I was a little shy. I was awkward in high school like i didn't go on my trips because i thought it was weird that you go to these trips and you get like, like, you know, like you get all these things, these benefits and these parts, like, I didn't want to do that. 
And so- Wait, 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 wait. why? Because I just thought it was stupid. I thought like, why would I want to go to a school and then they just treat me like God? Like, how is that really going to make me make a decision? Like, I wanted it based off of like the team, the coach. You know what I mean? Like, no, and, and I was no, shy. Uh, okay, no. I was shy too. <laughs> I was really shy. So it was like something like out of my comfort zone. I, I, was, I got you. I respect that. I respect that. So the guy called me and was like, yo, you come here, you'll start. And I'm like, okay, my whole life I had to earn. I had to work. Like nothing was given to me. So yeah. it just didn't feel right. Like I was like, nah, I don't really want to go. I go, you don't even know me. You know, and then Kathy Olivier from UCLA calls me. I played well in the, the CIF. So I ended up having like the best game of my career, like my final game in CIF. That was probably my highest moment. But then Kathy called me after that game and she heard that, you know, I still haven't committed to any school. And she's like, would you like to walk on, have an opportunity to walk on? And I'm like, fuck yeah, I want to walk on at UCLA. Yeah, so yeah, she yeah. Comes, she's like, Come that's me being recruited. No, it's you not. Know, no, it it's not. So then I took a trip to UCLA with my dad and Kathy, you know, brought us in and she was like, look, I could promise you that, you know, she's like, I can't promise you four years guaranteed. She's like, but what I can promise you is a uh, paid first year, but you're going to have to earn your scholarship every single year. And I'm like, that's it. And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, dude, and when she sees me practice and work, you know, I'm like, it's going to be a wrap. So I'm like, where do I sign? <laughs> where do I sign? I'm like, dad, let's go. Okay. Like, you know I mean? Okay. Lifetime. And it was my dream school. UCLA. Of course. Was- UCLA is everybody. You're like, when you're, when you're a California kid, most, yeah. most kids want to go to UCLA. You know, yeah. just to be honest. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what do you remember about your first year uh, in college? Oh, God. You really want to ask that? <laughs> <laughs> I tore my ACL, so I was out. I right? remember. I remember. I was out. I just have to get the fans to know. All right, all right fans. We we partied. I'm just gonna be honest. <laughs> but, like, yeah, yeah. I just yeah. saw Melana. Um, obviously, I still talk to Michelle, Marie, uh, Takia. Okay. So we partied. We you know had a great time. Kathy was an advocate of like hard work, but then you you got to have a good time. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. We used to have a good time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we yeah. Um, but no, <laughs> I mean it was you know. I mean, I was 45 minutes away from home, so not too far. Mm-hmm. I lived mm-hmm. in LA. Like mm-hmm. Michelle Greco was my roommate. Great person. I remember. Great, I remember. Yes, yes, yes. great human being, one of my closest friends. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. See, like I said, I, I yeah, obviously it kind of sucked that you got hurt, but like, yeah, I I remember you guys to kick it with us. You know what I'm saying? Y'all was always cool. And uh I just have a great time. You know what I'm saying? Like UCLA people is always to me, this is me. It's always like chill, laid back easy to get along with you know what i'm saying yeah. so like you can make friends and stuff like that anyway. well we always party together too exactly, exactly always we were close we were close we were close we, we were close, close. We were close. Yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying so like i don't remember a time especially sophomore year where like if we went to a club or went somewhere like y'all was probably pretty much with us yeah you know what I'm madison's i don't we yeah club with y'all we went to the bars <laughs> y'all are different well i mean stuff. i call madison's like the club because it's like okay. a, you know yeah, but uh, yeah, I never remember, you know what I'm saying? So, all right, what was the hardest thing from um, from college, from high school? What was like the biggest, like the hardest thing you had to adjust to? Shoot, probably to not be able to start right away, not to mm-hmm. play. That's mm-hmm. frustrating, you know? Of course. Like, come from being the best player mm-hmm. to now having to, you know, start from the bottom. Um, but again, like nothing new to me. It's just kind of how I, I kind of grew up playing basketball is always being counted out or you know, not highly recruited or, you know, that situation. So um worked my ass off and then actually ended up starting my sophomore year. So I remember, like I said, you was, you know, I was I was like your big one of your biggest shit because I was like, you know, you were so cool and like, you know, you were like the little engine that could that was like <laughs> always like that. So it was always kind of funny. What would you say your greatest triumph was and your greatest failure was in college? In college? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. we gotta we gotta build build the suspense oh, of the story good. my my favorite my biggest triumph yeah and, and your biggest failure oh god <laughs> she's what? stumped is no. it is it passing mike lynn's conditioning test you remember mike lynn? <laughs> oh, god, is yes. he on here? <laughs> Can we him on here first of all okay let's go over mike lynn Let's go over Mike Lynn. Okay, right? go ahead. Like go our ahead. strength and conditioning coach. Yeah, he's no, he's like insane. Super disciplined. Yeah. Um, my freshman year, I didn't know, like I know obviously Marie, like I knew of her from Orange County, um, but she'd make us laugh all the time. So I'm sitting there doing, you know, like an 
we're all doing abs and I'm like going doing an ab. Mike walks towards me. Mike Lynn walked towards me. And then I'm started to laugh because Marie made me laugh. And he goes, Nikase, he goes, you got some, something funny. Do you want to come at 530 in the morning tomorrow and do an extra workout? And I'm like, we can't laugh in weights. We couldn't. <laughs> no, but I'm serious. We couldn't. So, yeah. I mean, that's what we started, you know, our college experience in is Mike was super disciplined. We couldn't mm. talk. The only time we could talk in weights was counting. Yeah. That's the yeah. only time. He didn't play any music. No. Like, no. We have such a different experience than what these kids have today. So, <laughs> no, I agree. I, yeah, yeah, no, no. They, they'd be like partying yeah. and, you know, right. doing the like, Yeah, like Instagramming was, stuff. Like, no, Mike would not do any of that. So it's probably passing Mike Lynn's conditioning test and probably just surviving. Yeah. Mike Lynn. And I don't know, was he easier on you guys than us? No. Like, we sure? had, we had to do the 5 a.m. Oh. workouts. Those up downs and like the up downs yeah, at 5 a.m. is yeah. the worst drill ever. Your back is just like, oh, like, like a, like a gorilla's on your back. You're just, oh. <laughs> There, oh, like it's just the worst. Did so, you guys no. do the shuttle test? You guys didn't do the shuttle test, though. No, we, no, I don't remember yeah, that. No, exactly. Yeah, I remember you guys were did not have the same type of conditioning. Well, I mean, you know, we were prime at you know prime yeah, athletes, so we didn't. Yeah, we didn't really need all that. You know, what I'm saying okay. we were, yeah. you know, we were good. Like yeah. just, just, just get it strong. Oh. That creatine, whatever. You know, we'll be straight. Oh. <laughs> and. Your greatest failure, if any, I feel like it was all descent for you, like all you know, <laughs> up, you know, my up greatest to failure. Oh wow! Oh, there was a moment. I think it was. There was a moment in my. I think it was either end of my freshman year or sophomore year when I was coming back mm -hmm. from my injury. I like. I wanted to quit. It. I remember mm. that. I wanted to quit. Um. I can't remember exactly, but I just, I remember writing in my journal and I was just like, this might not be for me. Mm. Like, I, I can't remember exactly what happened. So I don't want to say anything that's wrong, but I was just frustrated. I think it was probably because I, like I said, like coming from being a star player in high school and then not, you know, being able to play right away. I was, I was just frustrated. Mm -hmm. And, um, but in my, you know, my dad's upbringing is you never quit. Like I couldn't face my dad and be like, Hey, by the way, I just quit UCLA. So that, it wasn't even an option. Like okay. that's not, okay. you know, but it was something that went through my mind because I think I was just really frustrated with how it was going or maybe even too on uh, how I was re coming back from my, my injury. No, so, no, yeah. Those like, when you tear your ACL, those kind of like year, I mean, back yeah. then it was like a year long. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, was, it was not it like what it is now. It was like six months and dude's back. Right. You know what I'm saying? But now it's like, yeah, I get it. I remember yeah, that. But looking back, it, it was a blessing in disguise. Like I got to learn, you know, a lot just from not playing and observing. And I transitioned from high school into college with no pressure of playing, you know, so that looking back, I learned a lot that, that year. So mm. you can sometimes flip your failures into like, you know, positive. Makes sense. Makes sense. What would you say your biggest lesson that you learned in college? <laughs> Remember, this is 1998. Remember, these were this is a long time ago. But you know, you were in college for you know years. So at the end of it, what was right. the biggest lesson you learned? I think it was you know a combination of just kind of observing my teammates and my coaches on mm -hmm. terms of like Kathy was a great communicator. She mm -hmm. was a very good person, genuine person. Um, and even watching Michelle, like Michelle was so different from me in terms of like. I don't know if she's going to listen to this, but she's going to laugh if I say it. We, like, <laughs> walk around, tell her. we walk around on campus and Michelle would like say hi to everybody, right? <laughs> like, hi, how are you doing? And then, you know, they would be like, good, how are you? And like, she'd have this long conversation. I'm like, Michelle, we're never going to make it to class. <laughs> like, we talk to every fucking person. I'm like, we're not going to make it. But that's who she was. She was just such a, like a people person. And like, mm -hmm. same thing as Kathy. And so like, now that was a huge, you know, thing for me, like after basketball, because no one really teaches you anything, right? For preparation of after, after basketball, after you see. Of life. course, of course. So just mm -hmm. learning, you know, their, um, just kind of, just their energy. I think that was important. And now, like as coaches, you know, um, dealing with so many different dynamics and personalities, like that really helped me. Like the whole base of Kathy was she wanted us to have a great experience at UCLA, and I think that's that goes a long way. No, I got you. I got you. So 
your, you know, your years at UCLA is up, right? Man. So what is the next thing that happens to you? Did you, did you know, like, okay, like, did you think that maybe I could play the WNBA or overseas yeah. or, you know what I'm saying? Like, how was that transition for you after, like, you know, what was your, I guess, what was your next thing? Um, I mean, I wanted to, but I wasn't, again, the same thing as from high school to college. Like, I wasn't highly recruited. I wasn't drafted. Um, but it was a goal of mine. Like, my trainer at the time, like, he was just like, oh, you're definitely going to make the WNBA. I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I was like, I'm not, that, <laughs> I'm not that good, you know? Um, but again, like, I always believe hard work pays off. And mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I just remember... Eventually I did get a trial, like Ann Myers, um, mm -hmm. you know, famous Ann Myers, um, who worked at, who played at UCLA. Now she works for um, Phoenix. She was the one who gave me the opportunity to try out. So that trial led me to an overseas job. So I made it all the way till the end. And then Diana Taurasi came back and they're like, okay, you know, we got to cut you. Diana's coming back. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, that's the I get, I get it, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> that's the way yeah, it goes. Yeah, I'm like, it, okay. Yeah. Um, but I did. I made it till the very end, which I was proud of myself. You know, like it was the hardest training I've ever been through in my life, like in terms of conditioning. Like we ran this system. It was Paul Westhead. Yeah, 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 yeah. The cycles, <laughs> all offense, no defense. He did not care about defense. He's just like, run as fast as you can. When you get there, if you have an open shot, shoot it. Yeah. That was our offense. And I was like, okay. And so... Um, it tested my limits. It tested my um, conditioning. Uh -huh. um, and I just learned too, the like, girls were just really physical. And I just, if I could go back, I probably would have got a little bit more like stronger, like physically, that mm -hmm. would have been something. And then I would have been working on my shot a lot more because in that league, you got to be able to shoot. Like you got to have like knockdown threes. Mm -hmm. And I was average. I was quick and feisty, So I got to the basket, you know, so I was, my game was different. Um, but it, anyways, it led me to an overseas job in Germany. And then I got to play in Germany. So oh, okay. So how was the how was your overseas in Germany? How how was that? How was that year over there? Fun, you know. Um, scary at first, you know, because being away and of course um, back then again we didn't have like iPhones. Like I think I had a sidekick <laughs> that they told me do not turn your sidekick on because it's going to be really expensive. But I'm like, how else am I going to like communicate call home and yeah, right. yeah, communicate, yeah, yeah right? Because yeah, yeah. they they pick you up and they drop you in a hotel, and I'm like, sure. Sure. What am I doing here? I have no way to talk to somebody. Um, I think Skype, but we didn't have Wi-Fi like that was accessible. Oh. So I just stayed in a hotel for a couple of days, prayed and hope I was going to survive this whole thing. But uh, once I got adjusted, I mean, I had a great time. You know? Okay. Yeah. So how many years did you play overseas? I just played one year and then I hurt my knee again. And this is for everyone who speaks things into existence. It actually is true. So once I tore my ACL in college. Mm -hmm. I said to myself, like, I hated the recovery. I hated the, the rehab. So mm -hmm. I said, if I do it again, I'm like, I'm done. I'm going to retire. And so I ended up tearing my knee again. Mm -hmm. And so the next year though, I was very lucky. Um, Shana's, uh, Shana who played at UCLA, yep. she was playing at Germany too. And so she actually hired, or she suggested they hire me as a head coach in the same division over Germany. So. Oh, so you was actually in Germany coaching after your first year playing no so i well i played i finished out my year of playing yeah. and i got hurt and then that that following season shana's like we need a coach she's like get over here i was like all right so i had a professional head coach as a um division one in uh, germany wow i didn't know this you yeah. know this is actually you know good stuff because mm. you don't just get that right out of you know after <laughs> you know what i'm saying like one year you play and then boom i'm a coach now yeah. You know? I was like, are you sure I could do this? And she was like, you could do this. You could do this. So, wow, it was really. Okay. So you coach one year, you play one year in Germany, you coach one year in Germany. What happens next? Um, I did well. We did well. So it was one of those teams that, you know, at the bottom two. That yeah. You have to, you have to stay have in the league. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I was able to do that. And the team obviously, you know, accomplished that. So I was, you know, given another year. And mm -hmm. so I coached there another year. So okay, okay, okay. Mm. So, how many years total did you play overseas? I mean, or did you coach overseas? In, you know. So I I played one year, and then I coached women in Germany for two years, and then I coached in Japan. Um, but then I switched to the men's side in Japan for two years. Now, what made you switch to the men's side? You know, obviously you were successful being on the women's side. What made you switch? So it's funny. I actually wanted to try to play again. So, okay. as you know, like as an athlete, like you just never give that, 
that never act, leaves your blood. Yeah. yeah it yeah. doesn't stop. I don't care what people say until like your wheels completely fall off. Yeah. You know, so I wanted to get back into training and get my body as, as best as I could. But when I went to Japan actually, and that's where, you know, Billy, I'm, I went to go visit Billy and another friend. Um, they would not allow me to play because I wasn't a citizen. So as a woman, I, they're like, well, you have to marry a Japanese man. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm like, I contemplated it. I'm like, I'm like, I really want to play. And they're like, right. well, you're, you're, you can't, it's illegal unless you, so I was like, okay, I'm not going to get married. Like, I'm not going to marry a Japanese man. And then I'm like, I'll coach. And you know, what's funny was when I went to Japan and I went to go visit like as many professional women's teams as possible, they would not allow me to sit and observe. They wow. shut me out. They were like, no, we don't want her. Like, they just said no. Now, again, I didn't speak Japanese, so I wasn't sure why. But the men's side actually let me observe. So then that's why I switched. Hmm. Okay. Wow. That's a hell of a story. You know, okay. the fact that the women won't let you observe at all and the men would. Yeah. So my friend, so really, I went to go, you know, even see Billy. I went to go see him play and see how, like, the lifestyle was because he's like, you're going to love it. He's like, it's just like Germany. Like Germany's really strict. They follow the rules. It's really clean. Like it's a safe country. So when I went to go visit, it was great. Plus I'm Japanese. So it was, you know, my Easy, a little bit yeah, easier. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so then I had a friend in Tokyo named, his name is Darren Maki. And he was playing for Bob Hill, who is a former NBA, NBA head coach. And so he was his head coach in Tokyo. And so I just asked him like, Hey, can you ask Bob if I can come watch a practice? And he said, yeah. And so showed up and I'm like, are you cool with this? And he was like, yeah. He's like, just stay off the fucking court. And I was like, Oh shit. <laughs> I was like, Oh shit. You know, like I was like, okay. So yeah. I was like, this guy doesn't, he doesn't want to mess around, but his practice was amazing. It was like efficient. It was like, it was like listening to like an orchestra because it was so, mm. so different from what, what I learned mm -hmm. as a player. And then I just fell in love with like how he taught. So for two weeks straight, I'd volunteer, come watch, come watch. And he's like, he's like, what are you doing in Japan? Why are you here? And I'm like, honestly, he's like, I'm like, I would love to work for you. I would love to be your assistant. And he was just like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah. So he's like, let me ask the GM. And then the next day he's like, all right, you're on my staff like wow. I'm make you do a scouting report. Cause I was staying, you know, and I was staying back and rebounding for guys and like helping out with like whatever, you know, like they needed. Cause I was mm -hmm. an extra, I was free work basically. Right. right? right, right like right. I had all of this basketball experience, but I wanted to learn under Bob Hill and um, yeah, he hired me. <laughs> man, folks, do y'all hear this story? Do y'all hear this story, man? It's, it's crazy. I love it. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So how long were you in Japan for? for two years. So the year that we, i I worked with Tokyo, they had that huge earthquake that 9.8. So oh. we ended up leaving like halfway through, which we were actually a really great team. It was, we thought we were going to like win the whole thing, but we had to leave because of the earthquake. Right. And the following year, like I was like, Bob, I really love Japan. Like, can you help me? And so he knew a guy at another team in a city called Saitama. And he was just like, look, you can be his assistant. He said, you know, you already know the league. It's going to help him, yada, yada, yada. So boom, I go back. Um, after a month, the front office was like, we want to get rid of the head coach. The players want you as the head coach. You want oh, to take wow. It? Okay. And I, was, and I was like, hold on. I go, wait one second. And I call my dad. I'm like, dad, I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, do I do this? You know, I'm like, am I ready for this? He's just like, you know, all I could say is try your best. If you fail, you fail. He's like, as long as you're players work hard for you. He's like, that's all that matters. And he's like, let's try it. So yeah, I got a head coach. So the players is like, they, the players they staged a coup. Head. They got a mutiny to get the coach out. So you can yeah. be the coach, man. That's crazy. Yeah. So. And, and I, like I said, I think it's, it's probably doubly hard to earn the respect of the men being obviously a woman coach, you know? And I think for the fact that that shows how great you are and how detailed you are as a coach. The fact that they would say that we want our head coach out. We want her to be our head coach. Mm. You know, like you don't see that a lot, you know, if ever. So like <laughs> I said, like, you know what I'm saying? So that's amazing, you know? Yeah. So you stay in Japan for a couple of years. How did you get back over to the States? Well, here, here comes my dad again in my ear. Like okay. once I met Bob, I was like, I want to be an NBA. I like, I want to, learn as much as I can. I eventually want to coach in the NBA because right. of the way, you know, his knowledge of the game. Um, I was obsessed with it actually, once I started working for him and then 
my dad was like, the NDA is in the United States of America. Get your ass back here. Um, <laughs> Japan. And I was just like, I love Japan though. You know, like yeah, I, yeah. I, and you know, when you're young too, like you think, oh, I'll just be here a couple more years. And then once you go to the States, so you stay. Right. right? So yeah. that's what my yeah. mindset was like, I'll stay here for two more years. They'll give me a contract. I'll be fine. I'll get back. And my dad was like, nah, you're fucking saying NBA, get your ass back here. So he made me, he made me move back. And I was like, dad, I have no job. Like, what am I going right. to do? He's right. like, you'll figure right. it out. <laughs> now, <laughs> now with the team in Japan, would they, would they offered you another year or? Well, we disagreed in terms of players. So I wanted, you know, a, a different, they wouldn't actually like have, my input as much in terms of the players that I wanted compared to what they wanted. Okay. So with that, I was like, I can't take on a team that doesn't fit my style. So I was just told by like my mentor, like Bob Hill. And even like my dad was just like, don't take that job. If like, you can't, because if you can't implement it and you don't yeah. win, you're going to get fired anyways. So yeah. like, so if, like you're the, if you're going to be the chef, you might as well, you got to pick the ingredients. Yeah. And even today, like Becky was like, never take a job. If like, they don't stand behind your philosophies and how you want to coach like that's you know you're just gonna set yourself up so okay okay i'm glad i, okay. I'm glad I came home okay so you came home your dad was like get your butt home yeah. so what happens that you know you're at home what's next so i'm like trying to hit every nba contact i know which i had none other than bob you know so bob you know funny story he actually contacted me with the spurs because he used to work for the spurs and like right. Um, there was a summer, summer NBA summer league goes on. And so I asked him like, can you connect me with whoever their head coach is going to be? And can I, you know, just shadow him? Like I'll volunteer, I'll drive to Vegas, you know, I'll get my own room. And he connected me with their trainer who was actually from Japan. So, um, he was just like, yo, you could stay on my couch, like observe practice and, and learn as much as you can. And so that's what I did. Like I drove myself to Vegas and um, funny story. I first time I sit in practice is Jacques Vaughn, who actually was the head coach at the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they've had two seats, right? And they're like, okay, you know, Natalie, you can just go sit there. Don't say anything. Just sit there, you know, and observe. And I'm like, who's this other chair for? Right. Literally, um, five minutes once practice starts pop sits right next to me. Wow. And I'm like, you gotta be effing kidding me. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, my first taste of NBA. And so I'm like, I got to ask him a question, right? Like, I'm curious and I want like to pick his brain. So I'm like, what do you look for in a power forward? Like such a full, like a loaded question. Yeah. He talked about Tim Duncan for a straight 30 minutes. Like this is what I look for. <laughs> and he just went da, 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 for 30 minutes. And I'm like, okay. I was like, that's a lot of information. But I was just like, you know, just like humbled, you know, to be there in that environment. And just, I, I knew it, this is where I wanted to be. Like all mm -hmm. these people were obsessed with basketball. Pop's mindset was crazy. So anyways, long story short, I try to, you know, get on with them for a video position. They didn't have anything open. So then random friend had um, an opportunity to go in the Clippers facility, which was mm -hmm. like 15 minutes from where I lived. And so she's like, hey, do you want to go to this like uh, open clinic at the Clippers facility? And Bob Hill's advice is always like, if you can step foot into a facility and be a facility, you go like, don't hesitate. Go in. We sit. And we're like listening to one of the assistant coaches. He's like, this is a youth clinic basketball camp. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I was like, youth <laughs> clinic. I'm like, oh crap. I'm like, wow, this is gonna be different. But so he ended up teaching us these drills and all the coaches were youth coaches, but he used me because after he saw that I could handle the ball, he was like, hey, can you be my demonstrator? I was like, all right. So after I, obviously, since I was his demonstrator, we became really close out over an hour. And then after I'm like, hey, by the way, I'm like, you always talk highly about CP and Blake and DJ. I'm like, can I come tomorrow and uh, watch the workout? This was during the summertime. Right. And right. he was like, yeah, why not? Like, yeah, go ahead. So I emailed him and yeah, he responded. He said, yeah, come, come to the thing. And just like how it was the Bob Hill situation, I came for two weeks straight, you know, and they're just like, you don't leave. You, you know, you sit here, you take notes. They're like, what do you want? And I'm like, at that point, I knew like the in was going to be a video intern, right? I didn't play in the NBA. So I wasn't going to be a former player that gets hired. I knew Eric Spolstra, Frank Vogel, Mike Brown, they all started their way through video. Mm -hmm, so I asked mm -hmm. to be a video intern and then Vinny ended up hiring me. Wow. I'm, I'm loving this story, everybody. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, I'm loving the story. I didn't know, I knew, but I didn't know. 
So right. I'm just interested, just like this bit by bit, how you got to where you're going. Right. So you started out as a, I was a video intern. When did they put you on the, on the team full time? Um, well, back then it was like a little bit different in terms of like payroll. So I was literally getting zero dollars, like zero. So I had to like train on the side, you know okay. what I mean, just to survive. Um, but after my first year with Vinny and we did well, he got fired. And then here comes Doc. <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> I was like, I did all this. I moved from Japan, right? Just to come to the States. And then everyone's like, no one survives the transition coach. And I'm like, great. So <laughs> I was just like praying to God. I'm like, here I, here I go again. I have to start from the bottom, you know, which is fine. I was already on the, you know, the video position. Um, but Doc literally just kind of met with me and he was just like, no, he's like, I'll keep you. Like it was within just having a quick conversation. Mm -hmm. Oh, and wow. He, you know, then, well, then I learned too, if like, if you're in video too, you're kind of safe because you don't make any money. So you're not <laughs> shifting the salary. Do you know what I mean? So he's like, yeah. you know, free work, you know, why not? She has, you know, she has all this experience from coaching and from playing. So yeah, he kept me. And then, you know, from there, it just progressed. So. It just progressed. Okay. Yeah. And say, so you obviously, because like I said, if you look up video, she's like, you'll see her YouTube, you know what I'm saying? See her, you know, on the bench. And anyway, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna just keep gassing her up. So I'm gonna just keep moving <laughs> forward. Um now you was with the Clippers for how many years? Ten. Ten. Wow. And what was the highest level you got up to? It was uh my title was player development slash assistant coach. Mm, okay okay so you were like you were like one of the head coaches in the summer league teams right uh no, like right there the, yeah i was a, the first assistant first I'm assistant summer league. okay so you yeah. got i remember you got up there yeah um so after 10 years with the clippers what made you want to leave mm, you know a lot of things okay. um that i could go over uh life experiences you know my my dad, Pat, like having my, you know, as you know, like having a parent die, like it, it changes you. Yeah. So many ways. Like, I don't even, I don't want to get into that. It's going to, no, happen. no, you don't have to, you don't yeah. have to. Yeah. Um, but you know, and then having a conversation with Becky, like she just, um, besides her X's and O's, like she's brilliant, like hands down, she's a genius with X's and O's, but she's a good person. Like, if you ever have a conversation with her, she is genuinely a really good person. And we honestly couldn't get off the phone when she called and she was just like, look, you know, what is it going to take for me to get you on board, get you on the staff? And I mean, I've never had that been asked before ever in my career. So, <laughs> for one, being wanted is nice. Yeah, you know? of course. But number two, we shared basketball stories, basketball experiences, being females in the NBA. Like we had so many similarities. And then growing up being small point guards being doubted, being counted out, you know, earning everything, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like having a chip on your shoulder. Like we've had so many similarities where I'm like, man, I, I would learn a ton from her, you know, right. on top of the fact that she's a genuine person. I was pretty much sold after like 90 minutes, I think was our first conversation on the phone. Oh, wow. So that, that's yeah. why I was like, okay, like, yeah, what is it? Like if anybody says what would it take? <laughs> oh, okay. Then I know, you know what I'm saying? Like we, this, this is only going to go up, you know, from yeah. here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, that's actually what I thought. Yeah, like, oh, oh, oh no. what's it going to take? Oh, yeah. oh, oh. going down. Yeah, it ain't going down from here. It's only going up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. so you go to the Las Vegas Asics. And as I said, did I? Yeah. You said yeah. Asics. Ace, my bad, my bad, my bad. Like the, you know. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, and you immediately win the championship your first year, right. right? How do you, how does that make you feel? You know, like they just validated everything for you. I mean, <laughs> it kind of validated a little bit of, and I don't want to, I don't want to speak for Becky, but kind of of all the stuff that we, you know, she had eight years, I had 10 years, everything that we learned and went through. Uh -huh. I would say now I'll just speak for myself, like went through like it all kind of, and then we implemented it into, you know, obviously her style, her philosophy, we implemented, but all the stuff that we learned um, and the, and again, get a ton of credit to the players who took it and, and went with it and mm -hmm. trusted us, trusted mm -hmm. our teaching, trusted our coaching style. 
-hmm. And mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day, like, yeah, we brought in a lot of information and teaching, but I think genuine leadership from her, from our owner, from our president, like it goes a long way, if that makes sense. So you can know all the X's and O's if you want, but if you have like genuine care about bringing people together and wanting to win, mm -hmm. that's gonna, that, I think that's why we won the championship. No, definitely. I like, I, you know, I watched, you know, some games, not all, but some. Um, I knew that you guys had the MVP uh, in Miss Wilson. Right. Um, you know, Kelsey Plum. 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 Oh my gosh. <laughs> my man, my man, oh my, my man. I'm not, I'm, I'm terrible with names. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I just remember that, you know, uh, that you guys had a magical year right. and, you know, super success. Now right. you're the defending champ, so everybody's going to be gunning for you. So, yeah. you know, I think that like, if you guys repeat, you know, start that dynasty going, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> It's a lot, it's a lot harder than <laughs> it is. Um, it looks. No, I just I just yeah, we now we know that. I mean, I think everyone was out for us too last year, just all obviously because even Tyler, um, who's on our staff, he came from the NBA. So I think we got there's a lot of like whispers, like, oh, these, you know, these coaches come from the NBA. Who do they think they are? Like we heard it and yeah. stuff was actually thrown right into our face. And so um we knew we had a target. And then after you know winning obviously it's just the target's going to be massive but mm -hmm. um you know but that's great for us like we love challenges i mean it's just kind of the way we talked about of how i was raised is like i'm better with challenges i'm better with things that are not you know given to me easy so, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so yeah. it's this is kind of like how my life my lifestyle kind of you know evolves a little bit so i'm excited um but again Coaching is coaching, but if you're a genuine person, I think that's when you ask about what validates it. This is, I, I think I'm finally happy that like, I'm kind of considering myself being a genuine person and that really has helped in my career. I think that's definitely. True. I think, I think so. Yeah. So based on your experience, what would be the best advice that you would give the younger version of yourself? Why do you guys like asking this question? <laughs> <laughs> you can't go back you can't go no back. no you're not going back you just say there's a, a girl just like you coming from orange county oh, okay. goes to ucla as a walk-on okay you know all okay. that you know like what's what's your advice for the next you okay right. that's i love it that you worded it that way yeah that's what i mean um my dad always believed and he actually said this especially before he passed was just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know now at the end of the day just Never give a fuck what people think about you. Like mm. just, and <laughs> at the time, like he would, he would say that when we were like young too, like mm -hmm. stop comparing mm -hmm. yourself, stop thinking about what that person thinks of you. Stop. Like he would just call me out right away. If I brought in like event, you know, I'd vent to my dad all the time, obviously, because he was my best friend, but like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, he'd be like, stop because there's, those are things you can't control. You know, and you're worrying about things that like don't even matter. And as long as like you're a good person, you do the right thing, you work really hard. He's like, life is, you know, going to be going to be good for you. But the minute you start thinking about and worrying about what people think, you would always be like, who gives a fuck? You always say that. <laughs> you're like, Nat, who gives a fuck? Like, you know? I agree. <laughs> now that makes actually makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Right. You know, um, especially in this world of today. Oh God, yes. Like, Where it's cyber God. stuff and people don't, Social yeah, media yeah. stuff. Like, thank yeah, God, yeah. we. You oh know. God, oh, thank God, thank God we didn't it. have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I would have made it on the teams. I don't know if no. I would have still been here. You know what I'm saying? Like, we had a lot of fun. Yeah, but uh, would have been banned. We would have all probably got our profiles or whatever canceled <laughs> or denied. Agree, agree. Yeah. So, I only got a couple questions, and then we're done. You okay. know. Um, Good. <laughs> we're going to get real deep now. Just like, <laughs> um, so obviously your transition from, you know, being an athlete to all of a sudden just being a coach in the next year. So you really didn't have like a, a short, uh, a long transition period. You just went straight into to coaching right away. Mm -hmm. um, now, do you feel like your transition was just kind of an easy one or was it still of a struggle? uh kind of going through the ranks of where you got to where you're at now or was it just like kind of like a click in the easy kind of transition mm, i don't think any kind of transition is is easy 
Um, just because like always walking into a new environment, uh, mm. people, different people that you're going to work with that you don't know if you're going to get along with. It's like, you know, switching to another team or mm-hmm. transitioning mm-hmm. from high school to college. So I think, um, you know, sometimes it's all about how, how do you handle those situations in like mm. in a new environment? How do you, you know, have the, have awareness enough to integrate yourself into that environment? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think it's ever easy, but to be honest, I actually enjoy situations like that. Like, I don't know, especially working in the NBA, like I like to move around. I like to shift. I like to, <laughs> Um, like he, like, he, he said, I like to kind of keep it, keep it, keep it fresh, huh? Yeah, like, <laughs> I like to, I like to meet new people. That's a huge thing with me. Like, I get really interested in you know people's backgrounds, um, why they you know behave, how they behave. I don't know why. I have a very curious mindset. I've said that like a thousand times. Like, mm-hmm. I love asking questions. I love to see why people do do the things that they do, especially when they're at the top, right? Like. You know, um, that's why, like, when I got here, Plum obviously was someone I was, like, I asked a ton of questions because she's a workaholic. And I think um, there's a reason why she's so great and why she's so skilled at her her age and her just her body type. She's, you know, you know not like a typical 5'8", five, 5'9", five, you know, built. Like, she's small. And so I was already, like, attracted to just, like, her energy, her obsessiveness and her work ethic because that's kind of how how I grew up right? Like just being like the outworker and um, just focusing completely on basketball, you know? And so even to go into a little bit of this, like the W kind of reminds me a lot of like my, the way I was raised playing basketball, because now these are females. So a lot of them remind me of like the things that I go through, or I wanted to go through, or I went through. So it's really fun to like see other women um, be in like really strong, you know, positions. And it's fun. You know, mm-hmm. well, that's good. Like I said, I think, um, you know, like I said, you had much success and, uh, you know, like you, you like you, you, the fact that you like the challenge, you know, some people want the easy way, like no, whatever's the easiest way, but you, <laughs> you know, boring. you like the challenge, which is, which is good. Yeah. So this is the last question and then we know we'll, we'll wrap everything up. Okay. Um, at one point, you know, in your life, some point in your life, everybody go kind of goes through heavy time or a hard time. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're trying to, I wanted to ask you, like, how did you get out of that bad situation or hard, hard time? Um, was it faith? Was it God? Was it family? Was it, you know what I'm saying? Was all of the above? How did you get out of that bad situation? Oh, wow. Oh. Hmm. We're getting deep here. Yeah, we're getting deep. Because <laughs> there's been some, there's been tough, really tough. I think it's, it's, it's definitely family. Like, I mean, you know, our close friend passed away 2018 and shoot, I was lucky. I was with my sister and my nephew at the time, like literally Mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, sometimes they don't come to summer league. And at the time they, you know, they were there and, you know, Earl gave me, Earl called me and, you know, gave me the news and I just collapsed. Like, and I'm grateful, you know, like they were there, like, if they weren't there, you know, I don't even think I would have got out of like the hotel room. Yeah. Um, so I think family obviously is, is super important and it's just, Oh God, it's so weird. It's so like really weird things happened to me too during, I'm, I'm just going to get personal on this, but like, so I was in Vegas and when we, you know, found out, you know, Billy had passed away. Um, I took a flight back like two days. Cause they're just like, just go home. They're like, you can't, you're not working well, well here in this environment, you know, it's not good for you. Right. So I went home and I remember it was so crazy, but I sat next to this woman who, cause I was crying. Like I was, I couldn't stop crying. Of course, and of course. This woman course. next to me was like, are you okay? And you know, it was funny, but she ended up being this really like nice, genuine spirit that she knew everything about. Cause you know how, um, Billy, he passed away, you know, jumping off, uh, a building, but I actually ironically thought he, um, he, for some reason jumped in the, the, va- the Sedona. Oh, like the mountains part. Yeah. Yeah. Because someone showed me a picture of him. So then that's why I thought, I was like, wait a second. Like, so sh- it was crazy, but she knew everything about that region. She lived there. And so it was just like, and she understood about suicide, like someone her, um, that was close to her just committed suicide. And so it was weird. 
it was just like, I've learned like, you know, it could be your family, which was huge like support system for me, but then it just could just be people's like energy and people that like, you're just going to randomly meet. And that's kind of happened in my past. Like, honestly, like me and Becky, we knew of each other, like for eight years, but we didn't like, we didn't really like know each other. And, you know, my dad passed and then, you know, now she gave me this, she called and you know what I mean? And like, I had just had probably one of the most best experiences of my life with my coaching career. Mm-hmm. of just having fun and it's kind of like you just randomly will have these people that will just come into your life and just I don't know just help you you know yep. isn't that crazy <laughs> man it's always it's always weird like when you at your think at your lowest point that's when kind of God brings somebody into your yeah. life to kind of like boost you up you know what I'm saying so yeah I, I, I trust me I, I understand that you know definitely right. understand that but I want to say thank you, Natalie, for, you know, coming on, you know, uh, the show. We mm-hmm. really appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Trust me, y'all. Uh, you know, obviously, I love Vegas anyway, but she's <laughs> kind of giving me an excuse to go there in the summer. Like, oh, let me go see the game. hint de hint <laughs> And they hit the casino after. <laughs> Might as well, right? You yeah, exactly, well. exactly. So yeah. just, no, I appreciate you coming on. Um, please, uh, give the people, I don't know if you did like give people your social media or do you keep that private for yourself? That's kind of up to you. No, it's open because it's just, uh, I don't keep it private. It's just my name. It's Natalie Nakase. Okay. Spell it for the, for the people that's not that smart. It's (laughs) my Instagram is Natalie Nakase. So it's N-A-T-A-L-I-E-N-A-K-A-S-E. And then it's the same thing with Twitter. And I just have those two because... I don't want to operate the other stuff. I don't. <laughs> I'm not into that. I'm very just clean and, you know, and then fortunately I am a private person, so I don't put too much, too much out there. And I think that goes back to, again, how I was raised. No, of course. Like I said, she's pretty low key folks. I've, I've known her for you know, obviously 20 years now. So yeah, she's always been low key. So, you know, don't, don't be offended. But <laughs> is that your nice way of saying be careful to reach out? She might not reach out. No, no, she probably won't respond. Like if she don't know you, she will not respond. I'm, just, I'm putting it out there now. <laughs> I will try my best. I will try my best. Yeah, yeah. It's sure, just weird. Sure. It's weird to like talk to strangers. So mm-hmm, sure, sure. She's not gonna respond. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> we're so, old, we're different. 1998. Hey, it's different. No, no, no. Right. For for me, it's different because I've known it for a long time. But right. you guys, if you guys do slider DMs, yeah, yeah. And there's no, no, no. Yeah, no. she's come to a respond. game in Vegas. Hey, I'll talk to you. <laughs> she, you she'll she'll, she'll, she'll wave to you behind security. You know, yeah. No, but I'm all about being organic. Like if I meet you, I see you. Yeah, then. No, I got you. I got you. Well, well, much respect. Like I said, I thank you for coming on. You know, so I appreciate you once again. Um, you can follow me at Travis W. Reed. That's R-E-E-D on Instagram. Uh, and I post on my social media on, on that and Facebook, Travis W. Reed. Um, you know, I post all my stuff on that. Or TikTok, just, you know, Travis Reed. You know, I know I have a TikTok just for video. So just kind of stuff like that. If you're a former athlete or a person who's interested in book reading, I have my book club, Travis Reed, an ath- a book club journey. It's on my LinkedIn page, Travis Reed. You just type it in, Book Club Journey. It'll be, it's open to the public now. So you can see that as well. Um, and like I said, like we got some more stuff coming. If you're looking for the merch, an athlete's journey, Travis Reed, just, you know, DM me. And uh, like I said, I'll get you a shirt or, or two or three or whatever you want. You know, got many different sizes from small to, you know, double XL. So yeah, just got some things going on. We appreciate your time. We'll talk to you later. Peace. Bye.